Uh, I just have a couple of questions. Um, sure. Uh, I think uh, while the uh, COVID pandemic has been a catastrophe uh, uh, to a great extent, I also see it as a silver lining for women because uh, the COVID pandemic has shown to the world that remote working hmm. works and organizations can sustain productivity and business continuity as good or even better than what it was otherwise. So with the remote working having come to stay and then uh, organizations now working on hybrid working uh, arrangements and flexible working arrangements, do you think this is uh, in a way helping in terms of bringing more women back to work and in improving our diversity and inclusion in organizations? I, I think uh, a lot of organizations have, uh, I mean, we have heard about it, right? A lot of organizations are moving to actually remote working models or hybrid working models. Uh, yes, I have heard about a lot of women saying that, hey, this is something that we were looking forward to earlier right. because when we had, you know, growing up, uh, uh, you know, kids and uh, we wanted to spend more uh, time with them. So this has come as a blessing. Right. Uh, it has also, you know, uh, brought certain challenges, I feel, Ranjan, because uh, uh, what used to be a definitive eight or a nine hour work has actually stretched into the time uh, the uh, time pie which I had uh, otherwise kept for my family, personal right? Life. Uh, the personal life. So it has spilled over to the personal life. But uh, I don't think it's a, a dangerous challenge or anything. It is something that uh, you know uh, people have to learn how to manage and learn how to draw the lines. And that can happen with having uh, you know very clear deliverables. So if organizations can uh, transform their performance conversations into, uh, you know, uh, discussing about outputs, did you complete this task? Did you complete the task number two, three, four? Instead of talking about outputs, if we have performance conversation transformation uh, to focus on outcomes, I have 10 things that I have done. I have done those 10 things and I have delivered this NPS score right. for the customer. So can, uh, if we can move the organizational performance frameworks from being output driven to outcome driven, I think uh, people will start figuring out the best way that juggle, reshuffle the elements of their life to bring in that balance. See what started off to be a, supposed to be a work-life balance of being able to work from home. If it turns, if it goes to the other extreme of eating up into my personal life, then the whole purpose is beaten. Defeated, yeah. So, yeah, it is defeated. So uh, can, can women and organizations, everybody, not just women, can organizations work to create the right performance frameworks uh, where uh, we start, like I said, start focusing on outcomes rather than outputs. Right. That I think will bring back the balance in this hybrid work environment that I'm talking about. Great. But there's another interesting uh, point that I want to share with you. Uh, in fact, I was just reading on uh, LinkedIn, one of the articles written by a, a renowned leader, that actually women's career took a hit during the pandemic. But you know what? A lot of them, because their career took a hit, they have also turned to entrepreneurship. Right. A lot of women entrepreneurs have come up in the last one year, Ranjit. Okay. And the number of women entrepreneurs actually who talk about wanting to start their own thing, being their own boss. I think this is also a welcome change. We need to develop the women entrepreneurial space, but we should not lose sight of the fact that we need, we are moving towards a hybrid work model and we need to create the way to address this work uh, uh, model uh, shift that is happening is to create absolutely outcome focused performance conversations great that transformation has to happen in organizations well said uh, uh deepa there's certainly of course a silver lining but at the same time there needs to be a balance uh, uh, in terms of prioritization of personal and professional life the next uh, the, the last question i have a little controversial um we all spoke about how there's so little uh, representation of women on the board right and uh, you also talked about the what and the how. Now, in our earnestness to change the landscape, I have seen, I have worked, I have heard, and uh, 
many organizations have almost resorted to some sort of a reservation for women and you know excluding the other gender from uh, positions now uh, i'm not sure whether this, this really serves the purpose or you know it uh, really brings about uh, uh, the real uh, spirit of diversity and inclusion in organizations what do you have to say about reservations for women like recently i saw people congratulating ola for the fa women only factory you know where 100% of the employees were women so what about the poor guys who have been excluded right yeah. so what is your thought about reservation for women in the workplace that's a very good question actually and i think very relevant to the way the uh, you know work landscape is uh, changing and transforming in uh, in the indian marketplace uh, ranjan uh, see for me reservation um, is something that has to be uh, kept for uh, difficult uh, you know uh, setups like for example politics right um that is the only and it has it has different reasons which which i don't want to discuss here because of the sheer uh, scope of the conversation it is right. really out of scope conversation uh, but that is the only place i feel reservation works and probably should work uh, because of the nature of politics right in uh, in any uh, in the corporate setup i feel a reservation is not going to solve this challenge because it is going to bring uh, again uh, what is the kind of roles that you are reserving for women right are you giving them is it again only it see it brings back to the i have seen organization reserve hr roles right. admin roles receptionist roles for women why correct so reservation also becomes meaningless if it doesn't give the option the, like i said the first right of refusal of a role should be with the woman if she doesn't want if, so i i was doing this uh, you know mentoring program for a fortune 500 company which is into the manufacturing and automotive uh, uh, automation sector uh, there there were a lot of women engineers right there's there's this say that uh, women don't prefer to take up stem careers but today women are they are they are moving to the stem uh, uh, careers so there are a lot of these women engineers technical architects senior architects who are looking for uh, you know opportunities and positions which do justice to their uh, background and capabilities now if if we bring in uh, reservations i think uh, i think it should all be skill based uh, it should be competence based and it should be assessment based so skills and competence and assessment has to be done and merit Fair based assessment. and merit based and merit based it should be merit based uh, women should not uh, you know uh, honestly if a woman wants to really feel uh, you know proud of her development and her growth she will not opt for this reservation she will say give it to me because i deserve it give it to me because i can do it and you test me whether i can do it or not right So I think women also should work towards that kind of. Uh, they they should not just take uh, things coming their way on a platter. If they they're not going to be able to, uh, you know, probably genuinely they may be having a challenge delivering on that role. Then what happens? Right. It's fair on someone else probably who would have been better qualified for that role, right?